Okay. Well, I'll, I'll try to be a little bit shorter because I know lunch is very important for everyone. So I just want to introduce myself and just give you a little bit of my background, kind of how I was involved in this project. Uh, my background is actually in outdoor and therapeutic recreation. Uh, one of the things just related to one of the, the uh, areas that I worked at was Brookfield Zoo, just outside of Chicago. And that's where I ended up learning all the accessibility codes because we were under con construction for about 12 years. And one of the things in particular that we incorporated was universal design. And that's going to be the focus of this particular project that I'm going to be speaking about today. Uh, one of the things that's kind of interesting is that we do have minimum standards related to recreation in the United States under the Americans with Disabilities Act. And just one of the things I just wanted to point out in the area of play areas, that's playgrounds in particular, that we have some specific accessibility standards that have to be followed, but they are minimum standards. And one of the things that we were involved in this project was going above and beyond those standards. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on universal design. That could uh, take quite a bit of time. But these are, there's seven different principles that universal design does follow. And those are some of the things I'll point out on the slides as we're kind of going through them and how these were incorporated into the project. But these are things that, again, that are going to go above and beyond the ADA standards and allow more accessibility related to this particular project. Now, the, the project is actually called Forest Glen Park, and it's actually a, a small little park that's only about two acres. It used to be an old swimming pool that was, uh, was uh, raised, and it was just green space. And then they had this particular project that went on. So Forest Glen Park, and just kind of give you the lay of the land here as we're kind of looking at the other slides a little bit later on. To the north here is the parking lot walkway that comes down into the center area here is the playground area this is a swing area this is a raised garden area and uh, water feature and then down here is a uh, picnic shelter as well and i'm going to point out different features in these different areas that incorporated universal design so you get an idea of how these were uh, re these were used in this project one of the things in particular that we did related to the entry area the parking lot wasn't very big, probably about 25 spaces, but we incorporated two uh, accessible parking spaces right at the entrance, and this uh, slashed area here is what's called an access aisle, and that's where somebody uh, would have, maybe they transfer out of their wheelchair, uh, out of their vehicle into, uh, into their wheelchair in that particular space. One of the things that we did in particular was to make that extra wide in order to accommodate individuals that have maybe a, a larger ramp or a larger lift that came either out of their bus or their vehicle. So as much more, it exceeded the uh, width requirements uh, related to the ADA. The other thing that we, we did too is made a very level, uh, short little uh, curb ramp to get from the accessible parking up to the walkway. One of the things that was uh, kind of discovered in the, in the code for the uh, Americans with Disabilities Act is that a running slope or the direction and travel that you go, they allow between a 5 and 8 percent slope, which is a ramp slope. But one of the things they, they discovered is that probably about 12 percent of the population that has a, a mobility uh, disability or needs some uh, mobility aid found that they couldn't even do that slope. So we tried to make sure all our slopes were below 5 percent. So making it much easier for everybody to go in. And also, this was the same direction that everybody from the parking lot would go in. So if a mom or dad were pushing a stroller, this is the direction that they would have to go as well, or pulling a wagon or whatever. So it made it very easy for everybody and very inclusive design for going in. On the east side of the park there, there's actually another entrance that just comes off the public walkway. And again, we made that totally level with the public walkway that goes uh, right alongside the, the park. And there's a picture I'll show you a little bit later that kind of shows that a little bit better. But again, we tried to make it low effort, uh, no slope for getting into the park, making it very easy for people to get into it. One of the, the things that we did include related to all the walkways going through, again, is trying to keep below that 5%, which we were able to. And any place where they would have, this is what would be called a curb ramp, a transition from a higher level down to a lower level. 
we tried to make that at 5% as well, which we were able to do. Uh, so that was, again, something that would make it very easy for a child to go from the walkway onto the playground surface or the swing surface very easily. One of the things that in the ADA that they do allow, or this is uh, related to the code, they have a couple ways to get up to the upper level of a playground area. This particular one is called a transfer platform, and this is where a child would pull up to this transfer platform, transfer off their wheelchair, and bump upstairs to get to this upper level. And one of the things that they've discovered is most children don't want to get out of their wheelchair, and it takes a lot of physical effort in order to be able to do that. So very, very few children uh, do something like that. The other option that the, the ADA does allow is related to a ramp on one side of the playground. One of the problems with that design is that you might have a child that's using a wheelchair, going with their friends up here, but then maybe there's stairs that go down on the other side. And unfortunately, then that child has to turn around, come back out, and try to meet up with their group on the other side. So one of the things that we did incorporate into this particular playground is a ramping system that literally goes all the way through from one side to the other to reach all the upper level of the play elements of that particular playground. One of the things that was very nice about that is this design is very inclusive. It's the same route all the kids have to go in order to get to those upper level areas. So that was something that we really tried to do. And again, we tried to make sure that slope was very gentle for getting up to that ramping system. One of the things that was kind of interesting as part of this project, which is part of a grant from uh, the Kellogg Foundation, is that we had to uh, incorporate universal design, but one of the feedback that we, or things that we had to do was have an advisory group of uh, child, children with disabilities, uh, parents of children with disabilities, professionals in the field, special ed teachers, things like that to get their feedback on this uh, particular project. And one of the things that it was interesting, a couple of parents said, our child wants to be challenged. They don't want something that's just totally easy and level to go into. So one of the things that we did actually do, did create was kind of an upper level kind of viewing or tower area as part of this playground. And this is one that actually a child does have to transfer off their wheelchair onto the transfer platform and bump up to this upper level. One of the things we were kind of concerned with was, you know, the separation that was going to occur. And with some discussion with the parents and also the play, playground manufacturer, we actually created a periscope that actually a child who cannot get to this upper level area can actually look and see what all the other kids are doing up in that upper level area. And this, uh, the bottom part of the upper level area here is a mesh, so they can actually look up and see them, they can yell to each other, and with the periscope, they can actually look to see what everybody's doing up there as well. So it's a way to try to have them included as much as possible uh, in this particular design, even though it's a challenge designed specifically for some kids who uh, wanted that challenge. Some of the other things that we did uh, included is a rubberized surface on the playground. The, uh, the ADA does allow what's called an engineered wood fiber. That's kind of a, uh, kind of a cut type of uh, a wood that can be used as a playground surface. One of the things is, is it's loose and you get kids on there and immediately it's a very inaccessible playground just because things get kind of kicked around. So what we did is we incorporated a unitary surface or a rubberized surface that had different uh, uh, colorations to it in order to uh, provide some kind of options for kids just to kind of see different levels that were going on in the playground. One of the things, again, kind of getting feedback from some of the parents, what we tried to do was incorporate some colors that the kids might be familiar with. So one of the things is kind of the blue and the green are kind of your lower level areas. Yellow is a el more elevated area, and then red is your highest point. Kind of thinking like a stop sign, you know, green, yellow, red. And that would be colors that a lot of kids would recognize. So they could understand if they wanted to challenge themselves, they would realize that they could maybe try to get up to these upper level areas. One of the things in these, uh, this is a uh, moguls as we call them, uh, that we did provide is in between some of the different moguls, some different higher level areas too that a, a children, a child using a wheelchair could use and challenge themselves to get up to this upper level area as well or go through that. 
The other thing is that we tried to make sure that there was a smooth transition from most of the walkways. Okay, I can't quite see it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go fast. Three? Okay. I'll go quick. Uh, one of the things that we tried to do is make sure that there was a level walkway areas that uh, allowed to get onto this playground surface. So again, uh, what would be required in the code is a curb ramp that would go in, would just be a small little area. So we tried to provide much more than that, up to about 50% of the walkway surface that a child, maybe they would uh, have a larger wheelchair or electric wheelchair, could get onto that surface fairly easily. So this is just kind of another view, kind of looking from the playground area across the walkway, cutting through over to the, where the swing area is. So again, kind of a smooth uh, transition surface, very easy to get on from the walkway to the playground surface. One of the other things is we provided with the swings, some accessible uh, swings that actually have a backing to it and a, and a holder that makes it much easier for a child, maybe if they have a weaker upper body or weaker neck, this provides some support for them. So we actually provided a couple of those to provide some options for, for the kids that might be coming to that area. The other thing that we uh, also put into this uh, exhibit is a raised garden bed with a water feature. And it's kind of designed from a higher level, so if somebody uh, maybe has a bad back and can just uh, sit on a higher level area, then it goes down lower all the way down to a wheelchair level. So if somebody wanted to transfer onto that ledge and play in the water or touch some of the plants, they can do that very easily. So multiple heights for them to be able to do that. The other thing here, we have a water feature that's kind of a bubbler right here that follows a stream going all the way down that uh, provided some interaction. We got some feedback from some of the parents with children with autism that really liked water that moved and liked to touch that. The other thing that we tried to do within the, when the cement was wet, to imprint different things such as leaves, sticks, just from the park so that some of the kids could have something that they could feel if they wanted to reach down through the water and touch those items. So some tactile different uh, experiences for them if they wanted to. At the end of the water feature is actually three statues there. There's a, a frog, fish, turtle, uh, and there was also a couple of ways to interact with those things. Once you have, you have a couple of pads here that once you touch them, it actually spits out water into a bowl. So we provided those at different heights, a different interactive thing. This one is in the, the walkway itself, so somebody could touch it or they could roll over it with their wheelchair in order to interact it where that, that particular frog would spit water into that bowl. We had a turtle with a side panel right here. It's a little hard to see. So it's a different reach range if that was easier for somebody to be able to use that one. And then the last one was on top of the ledge, so if they could sit on the ledge, they could touch it, or actually if they could just reach from their wheelchair, they could touch that as well. Provided lots of different options related to still being able to participate and do that activity. And this is just kind of showing some of the group that actually has touched it, and you can see the water that sprays into, those, into that uh, final bowl area. The other thing we had was a raised garden area that had multiple sensory uh, um, plants that were in there. Lamb's ear, which is very soft and tender if you touch that. Uh, we have a fern that when you touch it, it actually closes up. And this group in particular actually would take care of the garden. That was part of their responsibility. It's one of the local, local groups that actually would take care of the, the plants, put in different ones uh, throughout the, the year, and provide different uh, you know, uh, care of that uh, and watering of those plants. The picnic shelter provided a couple of different uh, picnic tables that were accessible. One out in the sun in case somebody wanted to be out in the sun. And then another one we determined to put one under the shade area. We, we found that there were a number of kids with the medication that they would take. If they were out in the sun too long, would get uh, sunburned very easily. So we made sure that that uh, provided a shade area, providing some options again for, for individuals. Okay, last two, two slides here. One other thing that we provided was a bermed area related to the park itself because there was a street right here, and again, from the information we got from parents who, who had uh, children with autism, they might be runners, but they said at least some visual barriers for them to not run into the street, and at least something, though it wasn't a solid wall, it provided at least something for them to be able to see from plants and some of the, the uh, uh, fencing that was there too. So one of the things I just wanted to say real quick is that it really takes a good group in order to make this work. 
and we had a good group from the park district people to the design people, and then I provided the oversight re related to my background in universal design. Without that, it, it's not gonna work. So you really have to make sure you have a good team of people that, that can make that work. My last slide I wanted to show here, this is the day of the grand opening, and this was a father that came with his daughter. She was 12 years old, pretty severe uh, cerebral pal uh, palsy, and one of the things he commented to us, he said, she's 12 years old, this is the first time I've been able to play with my daughter on a playground. I've never been able to do that before. And so this is like a slide that I always like to show because it shows uh, kind of the benefits of this particular park. But the thing I also think of is not only that child in a wheelchair, what if the dad was in a wheelchair or a grandparent? That they can also participate and play with their children or their grandchildren on this particular park because of the way it's designed. And so that's why I really encourage uh, the use of universal design in any kind of outdoor setting in that. So uh, this is just my contact information. If you have any other questions uh, that obviously I don't think we're gonna have time for. <laughs> so, all right, thank you.